George Catlin was an American artist. He first went out west in the 1830s. Leaving St. Louis, he traveled along the Missouri River, past strange and beautiful scenes, landscapes of dazzling color. The people he met were amazed by his paintings and thought him a great witch doctor. And his art, strong medicine. Catlin loved the West, loved the people, admired their courage, their fierceness, and their playfulness. He wanted to record their celebrations and their mysteries to capture a life he felt certain was soon to disappear. There are many beautiful paintings, but maybe the most important is a portrait of a man named Hawanjita. Though still young, Hawanjita had become a leader through his own merits, achieved in the different battles and exploits of his life. Now, he was head chief over many Sioux bands and widely considered the greatest of all the Sioux. He first gained renown as an athlete. He was the fastest and most agile in the tribe, who always came in first in any athletic event. In the hunt, he could run down a buffalo on his own legs. And in battle, they said his arrows never missed. Catlin's portraits show people who are wise, strong, religious, beautiful, elegant, and just plain likable. In Hwanjita's portrait, there's something different. He's got the charisma to dazzle the world. The Eastern artist and the Western warrior met when Catlin, newly arrived on the plains, camped at a fort where hundreds of Sioux families had gathered. He soon heard about the famous chief and was eager to meet him. The fort's commander made the introductions, and over the next couple weeks, the two men swapped stories in Hwanjita's teepee, shared buffalo meat at Sioux feasts, passed the pipe and relaxed. But Callan had come to the West on a mission, to paint. And he wasn't getting much painting done, because the Sioux were wary, worried that maybe their souls could be kidnapped onto the canvas. Hawanjita wasn't afraid, and agreed to sit for his portrait. Doing that, gave Catlin the breakthrough he needed. And the excitement and importance of the moment inspired him to experiment. He used more vivid colors, altered his brushwork. Those innovations were the foundation for all the work that followed. Catlin eventually came back east. He traveled around, giving lectures about his adventures in the West, 
showing his pictures. And one night in New York City, at the Stuyvesant Institute, among the audience was a delegation of Sioux. And when he held up portraits of the different Sioux, they'd shout in recognition. But when he held up Hawanjita's portrait, they went, hush, and bowed their heads, a sign that he was dead. Catelyn asked what had happened, and they told him that just a few weeks before, Hawanjita had accidentally caused the death of his only son. <gasps> he went crazy with grief and rode out of camp, swearing to kill the first living thing he met. Hours later, his horse returned riderless. They rode out in search and found him miles away. Apparently, he'd come across a huge buffalo bull, and it was the season when bulls are at their crankiest. They believe he shot a few arrows into the bull to enrage it, ran off his own horse, and then took on the bull with just his knife. It must have been a desperate struggle between the two. Hawanjita stabbing and dodging. The bull charging and bellowing. And when they found him, Hawanjita was horribly mangled and gored. Many of his bones broken. And the bull dead beside him. So ended the life of Hawanjita. The greatest of all the Sioux. Ah. <laughs>